Hey guys, this is your best friend in programming code Ajit and in this video I'm going to talk about browser window and web contents. These are the two most important objects in entire electron programming because with these two objects you can absolutely control all the aspects of your of your interface and we are going to talk about what each of them do the powers the capabilities of each of them how they connect to each other what is different about them how how do they differentiate from each other and the core capabilities what can you do with each of them to make your application better so let's get started right away any application that you create has two elements one the actual interface that the user interacts with everything that goes on the screen that the user interacts with and works with and the second part is the backend everything that happens in the background things like talking to the internet calling apis or writing files computations all of the things that happen in the background they run separately mostly and both the classes browser window and web contents they deal with everything that goes on the screen and the difference is browser window deals with everything that is a part of the frame of the window that you want to show and that includes things like the title bar the title text of course the minimize maximize buttons the close button the actual border around the app and everything associated with the display of your app that is not directly showing the contents of what you want to display but everything around it and web contents disconnects with everything that is actually the interface of the app so everything you see here for example in this example screen all of this is a part of web contents and all of everything that wraps it up is a part of the browser window so think of browser window as everything that's around and think of web contents is as everything that is within and they give you a lot of different properties events and methods that let you control these aspects so let's begin with a look at some of the common elements of the browser window so here are the methods properties and events in browser window that you can use now it does have a lot of methods properties and events but i just want to represent some of them to give you an idea of what exactly you can control when you use the browser window so the first one except for example in the first points over here you've got some events events like ready to show close and hide ready to show event for example is fired when your app or your screen is ready to display the contents and you can use this to set up uh, various connections maybe you want to call an api to display the data that you want to display maybe you want to pull some data from the file all of that goes code goes, goes in here and then there's the close event that is fired when the application is ready to close when everything needs to be wrapped up and this is where we can you can save things like your state let's say you want to save the position of the form like how big is the screen that's being displayed where exactly on the screen is it is when they're exactly on the monitor it's being displayed all of these things you can use you can save within close if you want to save any data to an api or you want to write any data to the files before the app closes that's the right event to do so and there's the hide event for example the hide event is fired every time the screen that the form goes off screen so if it's covered by some other form or if you minimize it the hide event is fired and then you can use it to do something with the data for example and you've got properties like width height x and y the width and height properties of course they're all about the size of the screen that you have on display x and y is where it is displayed on the monitor so if you increase the x value the form will move more towards the right mostly on the x axis and when you increase the y value the form will go lower below on the y axis so that's how it works and you also have some properties like resizable and movable that decide whether you can resize the form or where you whether you can move it around and there are some other properties like always on top modal and full screen always on top means that the form will stay on top above all the other applications that are being used right now and modal means that on in your application all the other forms maybe you've got a background form maybe you've got a main form the particular form that you have that you're controlling with this particular property is going to stay on top and will be minimized with the application 
but it will not stay on top of all other software that you're running right now. Uh, full screen means the app will go full screen so you won't see any other app in the background. The title property controls the title bar text and you got some, some methods too, methods like close, maximize, set content bounds and move top. Close will close the app of course, maximize will make the app full screen, just take it all across the screen. Set content bounds will decide how big you can make the form and if you set some bounds then you cannot increase the form size beyond that particular bounds that you've set. And move top will move your application to the top of all other forms. And Web Contents 2 has a number of different properties, methods and events. But in this particular instance, all of that is connected to the UI that is rendered, the actual content that's rendered. So you've got, you got methods like load URL and load file, which will load any HTM content, either from a web website or, an, or a URL in case of load URL. Or in case you want to load something from your hard disk, you can use load file. You got events like did finish load, which is fired when the content is loaded and is ready to go. And DOM ready, which is another event fired when your HTML content is ready for, uh, it's actually rendered already and it's ready for JavaScript DOM control. So you can run some JavaScript code. If you want to modify any of the, any of the DOM objects, you can do that through JavaScript and methods like set user agent which will set the user agent if you're going to make some calls you to the internet websites you can you can exactly decide what user agent you want to appear as and methods like print to pdf which will print your displayed website displayed screen to a pdf file so you basically get all the different things you need to to control your online display it, it's actually a controlled web browser so you have full control on nearly all the aspects of how the web browser works and how it connects to the internet or in the, and how it renders the data that it pulls to the user. How about understanding this difference and the capabilities using some code? So let's dive into this application that we already created and see some of these things in action. This is an app that we coded earlier to show how to call an API using Electron. And if you're interested in something like that, you can find the tutorial on this channel. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Make sure our content is discoverable and people benefit from the tutorials that I create. Now getting back to the topic, you can see this is a very very standard project, very simple project. It just calls an API and makes recommendation. Here is the main JS file, the entry point for this app. And if you look at the function, the first thing we create, we do is actually declare a main window. And inside of a create window function, we are assigning main window to a new instance of a browser window. And this function create window is called later when in the function app dot when ready. This is an event actually app dot when ready when the app is ready to display when the initial processing of electron has finished and the application is ready to work. Then you call the create window function and here you create a new instance of browser window and you give it a set of properties to begin with. So you've got properties like width, height, you are setting the title of the app. So this will be set to. You're setting an icon and you're also setting some basic preferences for the website content too. things like content isolation and the preload file path all of those things then you are setting whether you have a menu or not so in this instance i have no menu and this is all a part of the browser frame of the application frame you also have a function called load file or load url on the browser window too and what it does is it loads up whatever file or URL you assign in the web content. So load file and load URL functions, they are available in both the web content class and the browser window class. Next, you can see what we are doing is we are actually retrieving the web contents instance of this browser window. Every browser window comes with its own instance of web contents. You can have more than one actually, but there is at least one or the main main content that's being displayed there is there is always one at least so you can actually retrieve it and you can control it we are calling open dev tools on this instance which is going to open an instance of uh, chrome developer tools so that you can interact 
with the form so let's see it in action let's see exactly how the every statement works and what is happening all right let's run the code and here is the app you can see this is 800 by 600 the title is set right over here and this is the dev tools so you can inspect the app you can modify the HTML content even inside the dev tools if you want to and let's try something else here we've got a statement right below create window the create window is this function which says main window maximize so this is the instance of the browser window that we are trying to control let's decomment it and let's see let's run it again and this time the window loads up maximize to begin with browser window has a big number of properties and methods that allow total control over the window being displayed and you can find a complete list of them in the electron reference so I'm in electron reference right now and you can select browser window on the sidebar right over here in the reference API section and you will see a huge number of events like page title updated close closed blur a huge number of events a big number of instance properties that allow you control over the window that's being displayed a number of methods things like destroy close is full screen which should actually be a property set full screen which is again a method set enabled set size get size and a lot more you can click on any item to see details about it there is even some sample code sometimes available to you that you can use to understand how things work and web contents 2 has a similar area where you can see all the methods properties and events associated with it talking about web contents remember we also capture an instance of the web contents in our main.js function it was right over here let's take a look at it here we are calling the open dev tools function to show the developer tools I opened I stopped the instance of the app and I commented this so that we don't show the developer tools now let's also capture an event and show a little alert box in the web contents using the web contents instance so let's do that let's use wc.on and let's use the dom ready event we're gonna use a lambda function let's just show an alert to show an alert inside of electron app we gotta use the dialog object so we'll just import it now it's also in the electron namespace there we go and now we have dialog available so we're gonna use dialog dot show message we can set up the dialog box using options things like the message the actual text we want to display in the text the title now show message box is a promise so if you are in an async function you can await it or you can resolve the promise to capture the return value from the dialog and find out how the user interacted with it let's resolve this promise we are going to use then let's print some value to the console let's run it and let's see what happens so you've got the form now with a little message box and when you click on ok you should see something on the console right now we are not displaying it so let's use the shortcut to display it and you can see over here response 0 checkbox checked equals to false this is from the dialog box let's find out once more console open and now you can see the value over here I hope you have a better sense of the browser window and the web contents object and their relationship now these are the two most important objects for your app and if you want to be a good electron programmer you should study them well if you like this video don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on the notify icon to keep receiving fresh content for me Thanks for watching again. This is your best friend in programming, Kodajit, signing off.